So in our lesson today, we're going to be looking at a term called hybridization. This is like our word of the lesson. And I want to look at this by first uh, looking at this question. So draw a Lewis structure to show how hydrogen gas forms. So that would be H2 hydrogen gas. So in grade 9, 10, or 11, we would take one of our hydrogens that's in group 1, so we have a one valence electron, put it with the other hydrogen that also has one valence electron, and we put them close to each other. We circle the orbit, and of course now that thing uh, ever represents these electrons. They're now shared by both atoms, and all the orbitals are filled. But more accurately, what is occurring here is that the 1s orbital of one of the hydrogens is simply overlapping with the 1s orbital of the other hydrogen. So there's one, it's circular, and there's a second one, also circular. And what's happening is these electrons are migrating between, and there is our covalent bond now. Uh, and of course, this overlap is leading to our sharing. So to expand on this idea, we've got our one hydrogen atom. It's got one electron in the 1s, and there it is, circular orbit. And we're overlapping that with the other hydrogen in its one electron. Notice the spin is now down. They're opposite spins. And when we put them together, they fill that 1s orbital up. In fact, all the 1s orbitals get to be full. But actually what's happened here is we've got a different shape that is formed. It is actually uh, more of an oval. So this is where our hybridization actually is coming from. We have a change in the shape of our orbital after it has overlapped. So the two s orbitals have overlapped and have changed shape. The shape changes as a result of the positive and negative attraction between the nucleus and the electrons. And this new shape, which is due to the repulsion and attraction, is the most stable arrangement. So what does it look like when orbitals overlap that are different shapes and letters? So that last example, they were both s orbitals. What happens when we overlap s and p orbitals? So let's take a look at this by uh, figuring out what happens with hydrochloric acid, or HCl. So we've got, once again, our hydrogen atom with this one electron, and it's a circular uh, shape. And this time we are putting it with the chlorine, and it's got an electron up to the 2p1, like that. And you can see that there is our shape of our p orbital that might seem familiar. And so when we overlap here, we get that particular overlap going on. You get your electrons filling up. And this is sort of a, this is essentially, so you've got your s orbital here and your p orbital here, and then they're combining to make this one. This picture here doesn't really show our shape very accurately. It just shows the overlap going on here. This picture shows what the sp orbital uh, overlap looks like. So you can see that this one here is bigger. And so we've got a couple of electrons floating around in here. So each atom now has a full outer shell and a full electron energy level diagram. So this idea is known as the valence bond theory. So it's definition time. And this states that atomic orbitals overlap to form a new orbital with a pair of opposite spin electrons. One goes up, one goes down, if you will. So let's continue this idea. Uh, let's draw an electron energy diagram to show how methane, which is made up of one carbon and four hydrogens, actually exists. So once again, here's our hydrogen. Got our diagram looking a little different this time. Now let's recall that there are four of them. That's uh, CH4. We'll come back to that. And here is our carbon atom. So the deal is with carbon. It's got a full 1s, it's got a full 2s, and then it has two electrons in the uh, singular ones, 2px and 2py, but there's a problem here. Because recall that carbon has four valence electrons because it's in group four, right? It should look like this. I think we have a bit of a contradiction here because this does not feel like it's gonna lend itself to this. We only have two singular electrons here not the four that we're used to. So which orbitals are going to overlap? Uh, the 1s and the 2s and 2p will have to overlap here. So this is actually kind of what sort of looks like it's going to look like in the end. Here's our four hydrogens with their circular 1s and they're going to overlap with our p orbitals and then this is our outcome. So this shape is created and has been verified experimentally 
But how is this possible? Wouldn't the 1s and 2s orbitals overlap? Or is it the 1s and the 2p? So all orbitals have similar shape. Here it is, they all have the same shape. And so we need a new theory. And this is where hybrid orbitals come from. So we're using a hybrid orbital, we're able to explain the shape that is created with the S and P overlap. And we're also able to explain double and triple bonding. And we'll come to that a little bit later in our lesson. So let's continue to look at this carbon from methane. So here is what we started with, but we weren't happy with that. So if we realize carbon is going to make four bonds, what we need to do is we need to take this one electron here and it gets promoted up to the 2pz. So we have four orbitals now, one, two, three, four. Just to clean this up slightly though, all these four orbitals are all the same. So we're going to have them all in the same energy level uh, space, like back, back down here our uh, S was a little bit lower than our P orbital. So we're gonna make them all the exact same. And because we're talking about S and P orbitals now, this one was an S orbital, and we have three P orbitals, one, two, and three. So we'll represent that with a P3. And probably the more accurate way to do this is to call it SP3. So this SP3 hybridized orbital is what we have created. Okay, so this is the SP3 hybridized orbital. And here is essentially the exact same thing we, we just explained. So that's what we started with. And you can see that our hybridized orbital, we've got our energy level raised. And even there's a mention here that uh, hybridized orbitals are wider than non-hybridized orbitals. So they seem to be a little bit bigger. And that's why experimentally, the this shape of methane has been measured and verified. So this is actually a key table. This might end up making a little more sense later. In fact, there's a later table that uh, is similar to it talks about the number of electrons you have bonding. So number of electrons, so B, E, H. So it would look a little something like that, right? And B is in group two, H is in group one. So you only would have two electrons. And so the hybridization we actually need is something called an SP. Notice that we need two and there are two letters here. Now another thing that can happen is something with three valence electrons, like BH3. It'll look a little something like that. So notice we have three bonds, one, two, three. We have three bonds and we have three letters here, one S and two Ps, that makes three. See how this is working. And our next example, we have four. Notice that we have four letters here, one S and three Ps. So the number of electrons that are bonding are actually gonna indicate how many letters you need in your hybridized orbital. That's sort of really nice. That goes, that's very, that's almost foolproof that thing. But we'll come back to this. Uh, so the number of bonding electrons that it gets, the number of hybridized shells you need. That's what I said. Okay, so can we use this diagram to help us understand double and triple bonds? So let's take a look at this molecule right here. So methanol. And what we want to investigate is the carbon and the bonds that go around it. So what's going on with this one is we actually have three bonds. We have a double bond, which is one first bond. We have a second bond there and a third bond there. So we have three bonds. So we don't want to hybridize up to sp3. We actually want to hybridize up to sp2. And in our picture here, we've got uh, this representing one of our sp2. That's one of our sp2. That's an sp2. And that's an sp2. So it should look a little something like this. So that has been raised up. Now we've got a bond angle here. It says of 120 degrees. So we're not actually looking at this yellow one, right? This yellow one is not necessarily uh, the bonds that we're talking about because it is actually representing that singular electron that didn't get involved in the hybridization. So we have one electron that's floating around in the yellow. The, uh, the sp2 ones, you'll notice again, we have three bonds. And so here would be our sp2, sp2, sp2 orbitals, okay? So back here, we said those were sp2. Well, they weren't really because they weren't hybridized yet. Those are sort of like our preamble. This was this kind of the before, and then this was our after here. So now that they're hybridized, now we have three orbitals, and it says they have a bond angle of 120 degrees. It's probably not hard to, to envision. You know, if it's 360 degrees around, that means you're going to have, if you're dividing it by three, you should have something every 120. And that's what the bond angle here is also confirming. Now we do have to take this a, a further step here. So here is our hydrogens that with their circular orbitals and they are overlapping right here. So we get some electrons there 
Here's another hydrogen, more overlap. And then what we got going on here is our oxygen and our carbon. So what's gonna happen here is the pink ones, if you will, are going to overlap, and this is representative of our first bond. This is, we're gonna call this as bond number one. This is called a sigma bond. I think that's like a shape for, that's a terrible sigma, but that's essentially a sigma bond. Now, the sigma bond, let's just pretend is representing that one bond here. So we do have a second bond because we know it's a double bond. And that second bond is occurring, half of it is here and the other half is here. And these are called pi bonds. So it's sort of like two half bonds make a whole, if you will. And so I know it kind of looks like we have three bonds here, but we're saying that this is the first bond. Sorry, this is bond one, our sigma bond. And then this is adding up to make one as well. So this is like our second bond. So two halves making a whole. And those are what are known as the pi bond. So in a double bond, we have sigma bonds and we have pi bonds going on here. Um, so what happens when we've got something that is a triple bond? So here is an example, um, cyanide, if you will, HCN. And if you look, we've got a couple of electrons that are going to need to be hybridized. So we're actually going to have SP hybridization. Again, if you think about it, how many letters do we need? Well, look at carbon. It has one bond and then that's the second bond. So it's an S and a P. Two bonds, two letters. That's how we figure that out. Now this is what it's going to look like after all the overlap. So once again with this one, we have a sigma bond right here. So there's our there's a sigma. And then we've got a pi bond up here, its partner down here, and those would be bonds two. And then the green ones are more pi bonds. And again, there's two of them, they're half. That would be a third bond. So again, just to review here, our first one could be our sigma bond. Our second one is our yellow pi bond. And our third one is our other green uh, pi bond. That makes three bonds in total. Uh, so what's the deal with phosphorus pentachloride? Look at this one. It's crazy. It's got five bonds to it. Uh, so that's more letters than we our S and P can hold. So we actually need five hybrid orbitals. So the number of bonds required will indicate how many hybrid orbitals are required. This sort of harkens back to that earlier slide. So if you've got something that has two bonds, it's, you need SP2. If it's got three bonds, you need SP3, sorry, SP2. Four bonds is SP3. Again, it's like saying we have an S and three Ps. So there are four letters in total that corresponds with the number four. We're looking up to the number five here. We've got an S, we've got three Ps, and we've got a D. We've got five letters involved. So if you want to just quickly look at some examples here. So this carbon, what kind of hybridization would it need? Well, it's got one bond, two bond, three bonds. It's going to need SP2 hybridization. That's what it will look like. Here's a triple bond. So again, maybe just looking at this carbon here, it's got one bond and two bonds. It's gonna need SP hybridization to make it work properly. So linear shape. And here's the one from the previous slide. It has one, two, three, four, five. So we need five letters. We need SP3D uh, hybridization. Five orbitals, five letters, five bonds.